All right, guys, so welcome to another video. In this video, we're going to go ahead and talk about sessions in Nest.js. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys how we can actually enable sessions. So that way we can actually have more persistent, uh, we, we can have a more persistent application. Sessions are basically very important for any uh, application that has to have state. Because by default, HTTP requests are stateless. Every single request made to the server is uh, is independent from each other. And it doesn't really tell you anything about the previous request. So we don't know who the user's logged in. We don't know who they are. And the way we solve that is by using something called cookies. So with sessions, basically you have sessions enabled on the server side. And sessions will pretty much take care of generating an ID for that session. And that ID will be uh, used as a cookie on the client side. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and install a couple of packages. So what I'll do is I'll simply just go over to my project or go into my terminal. We'll do yarn add express session. And then we'll also install the types as well since we're using TypeScript. All right, so now that we have installed the types, uh, let's see, so we have, yep, perfect. Okay, so now we just go into our application, we go into the main.ts file. So it's very similar to how you do this in Express, it's really the same thing. So what you do is you just register the middleware by calling app.use, and then you wanna import the session. So what we'll do is we'll simply just do import a session from Express session. Okay, uh, and we also want to do one more thing, and we need to also import Passport as well. Now, so you don't need sessions to work. You don't need Passport to work with sessions, but because we already used Passport in the previous videos, I'm just going to do something that we did not do already, and that's just making sure that uh, Passport is enabled with sessions uh, because Passport uh, can actually work really well with sessions. So whenever the user is logged in, it will basically save the user to the session, so that way we'll know who the user, who the authenticated user is. So I'll do that as well. Okay. So first let's register the session. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and set the secret. So this is the secret for the session. Well, it's basically going to be responsible for how we're going to encrypt the session ID as a, as a cookie. So you want to keep this an actual secret. Don't give this to anyone. If they use that, if they have it, they can literally decrypt the cookie and you want that. We're going to set resave to false. So this will basically prevent the session from being forcefully resaved to the session store. Uh, so typically you'd want to set this to false. Okay. Um, and we'll also set save uninitialized to false. So this will prevent saving sessions that have not actually been initialized. So what that means is, let's say, for example, if a user just visits your website, they don't log in, they don't create a new account, then you don't want to usually initialize a session for them. Uh, you don't want to, like, you know, you don't want to, like, give that session to them. Instead, you want to allow the user to log in, and once they log in, then you'll initialize the session. So setting this property to false is what you'd want to do. There's also other things that you can set, too. So, for example, if you provide the cookie property, you can set the max age of that session. So you can have it be like, for example, one minute um, and after one minute, it'll expire. You can also set the session or the cookie to be a secure cookie. I don't know why my IntelliSense is just in the way all the time, you know? There you go. It's just like literally right over there. It would be so annoying. There you go. So you can set it to be secure. You can set it to HTTP only, same site, sign, whatever it is. Uh, max age will be fine. So now that we have the session middleware enabled, you can actually uh, integrate this with Passport just fine. Or you can, you know, let's say, for example, if you don't want to use Passport and you have your own authentication strategy, you can actually directly uh, interact with the session object itself uh, by using the session decorator. So, for example, I'll show you guys that real quick. Let's go over, let's create another endpoint just for fun. Let's do that inside the auth module. So, I'll just make this a get request and we'll just leave this as, as so. And we'll just do async get session, or let's just call this get auth session. And what I'll do is I'll simply just do at session. Session. Okay. 
And uh, yeah, I think the session does come from the actual Nestor's con package. Yeah, this decorator. Yeah, perfect. Okay, and so the session is going to have a key value pair, and the type is going to be a record, and it's just going to be a string of any. That's really what the session is, as a bunch of key value pairs. And for now, what I'll do is I will log the session, and let's go ahead and access this endpoint. I think we didn't start a server up. Let's do that real quick. Okay, now if I look into my Postman, you'll see that I actually don't have any cookies. Okay, if I call get, I shouldn't get a cookie, which is fine, because we have save initialized at the false. Uh, and now if you look at the logs, you can see that this is what the session looks like. Okay, now you can also do other things too, such as uh, if you want, you can get the session. I don't know why. Um, there should be a session ID. Uh, there should be like a session ID over here. I think it's session. Yeah, there we go. So every single time I make a request and move this through the screen, you can see that it gives us a new session ID. Okay. So every single time I make a request, it gives us a new session ID. Okay. Now, if I go back into, uh, if I go back into our configuration, and uh, and just let you know, we have not done anything with passport yet. I've only imported passport, but uh, I'm not going to do anything with that just yet. So let's say, for example, if I set save uninitialized to true, look what happens uh, when I click on. If I, so I'm going to send a request right now. So you'll see that this is the session ID. On the browser, you can actually look for this value on the browser. Um, and I'll show you guys that later. But if I click on send again, you'll see that the session ID is going to be the same every single time. Okay, it's going to be the same every single time. So it gives us a new session ID. Okay. Um, so now let me do one more thing. Let me change this back to false. And let me go ahead. And you also notice that in Postman, it also shows the cookie right over here. And you can see that uh, this is actually how it would look like in the browser as well, or whatever you know client you're using to make a uh, post request or get requests or really any request. You'll see the connect.sid, which I guess SID stands for. I'm assuming SID is st short for session ID. You can actually change the name of that too. Uh, and you can see right over here. Uh, so everything up from, I think it's everything after 3A. So for S2, V2, uh, it seems like it's too late. We have to make another request. So let's send a request, I think. Oh uh, yeah, I think our cookie actually expired. Let me let me actually do this again. Let me go back here and let me also change the name of the session to just be uh, nestjs session ID. Okay, so we'll set it back to save and initialize set to true. But like I said, most of the time you'll want to set this to false because you'll also you'll also want to make sure you like you know enable a pop up that asks the user to allow cookies because obviously you can get into trouble for that. Anyway, so you can see this is the nestj session. You can see that, uh, uh, so if I go over here, you can see that this is the session ID for L2HWLKS. Uh, and then you can see that right over here. We can see that all the way up until this dot, that's the session ID. Everything else, it basically allows you to, it, basically it's used to decrypt the cookie or assign the cookie in other words, okay? But this is the actual session ID. Okay, it's just, it's just you know, encrypted and sent to the browser and save as like an actual uh save the actual cookie you can see that it expires uh uh very soon in about a couple seconds it's going to expire and uh you'll see that in just a couple seconds if i if i make that request again it's going to show the same cookie again okay so uh it should expire just now yep just expired just now if i click on cookies again you'll see that the cookie is removed from the client because it expired and that's what Chrome does as well. And if I go ahead and if I click on send again, it's going to give us a new cookie. Okay, so that's pretty much how that works. Okay, but uh, like, like I said, by default, you want to send this to false. Okay, so now, uh, how exactly do we make it so that the user is actually, or the cookie is actually initialized, or the session is actually initialized? Well, this works the same way when you use sessions with Express. So basically, 
as soon as you modify the session object, so for example, if you do session that I let's not session ID, let's do session the authenticated equal to true, and we'll just return the session. Okay. As soon as you modify the session, that is when uh that is when it's considered initialized. Okay, so let's go back to our configuration. Let's make sure that save initialize set to false, and then we will uh, basically manually update the session object. Okay, and when this happens, it will actually initialize the session. So watch what happens. So let's go to the logs. I'm going to go back to Postman. I'm going to go ahead and click on send. You're going to see that it sends back authenticated to true. And you'll see that this is the cookie. Uh, so the ID of the cookie or the ID of the session should be V-A-Y-R-U-K. And you can see that's what it is right over here. If I click on send again, it's going to log the same exact session because every single time we we every single time you modify the session, it's going to initialize the session. Okay, so let's just wait a couple of more seconds. So three uh, in about about twenty seconds, it should expire, and we can uh, we can make a request again. And what will happen is it will what will happen is it will authenticate. It will set that value authenticated to true, and that will uh, modify the session object, and then that will consider the session to being initialized. And as soon as that happens, that means the same cookie that we got originally when we got initialized will be the same cookie that will be given every single time. So that's pretty much how underneath the hood the login mechanism works. That's actually how it happens with Express or a Passport. So the cookie is gone. If I click on Send, it gives us a new cookie. Okay, it's a completely different new cookie. If you look in the logs, the cookies are entirely different. Okay, so uh, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty straightforward when it comes to sessions. Uh, now, obviously, we need we need the sessions to work with um, we need the session to work with um, with logging in. Okay, because right now, if I try to log in, uh, it's so if I try to log in, it doesn't give us a cookie. And that's because by default, Passport won't actually uh, like enable sessions with us. We need to actually do that ourselves in order for that to actually work. Now, in order for us to actually get sessions to work with Passport, uh, it's a whole process. So I'll save that for another video because um, we need to register a couple of middlewares and then we also need to set up a serialize and deserialize function. Uh, so I'll save that for the next video. And in the next video is where we're going to actually have like a full actual authenticated application up and running. So I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace out.